All right. Hello, everyone. I'm Swaroop, co-founder and CTO of Actual Data. Uh, I've interacted with many of you before on community Slack, but I, believe it or not, this is my first town hall presentation. I've been kind of training for the last 18 months to meet the high standards set by Maggie. So I'm finally ready. Um, well, today I am excited to share with you a preview of something that we've been working on, automatically detecting PII types to power compliance and uh, other governance use cases. Uh, as you all know, annotating data sets and columns with the right PII types is important for many governance use cases like access control, applying the right masking policies, GDPR deletion, and what have you. Uh, data Hub already supports a very rich business glossary feature, which uh, Professor Collins has presented uh, before, um, you know, we allow separating PII types from compliance types and linking them, which allows you to manage your uh, compliance types separately. However, today you still need to manually uh, annotate all the PII types, and this takes time, and the time to value is quite large uh, once you adopt Data Hub to actually realize all the compliance use cases. Uh, but next slide, Maggie. Um, coming uh, very soon, our connectors for SQL sources and S3 data lake will automatically detect PII types during ingestion. Columns will be associated with predefined glossary terms. Uh, and in the first version, we'll support info types like age, gender, and other info types that you can see listed here. And we'll continuously add support for more info types. Um, next slide. So here's a very quick description of the algorithm we use to attach info types to columns. I won't get into details here. Uh, the main thing to take away is there is a possibility that we can attach multiple info types to a given column because you can have JSON snippets and whatnot. So we compute the confidence levels for each info type uh, after uh, you know running a different algorithm, which I'll explain in a bit. And if it's above a certain threshold, then we associate that glossary term with the column. So you could actually end up with multiple glossary terms associated with the column. Next slide, please. Okay, so this is how we uh, actually determine if a particular info type applies to a given column. So we, uh, we actually compute several different parameters like regex match on column name, description, the data type, and finally, extracting sample values and invoking a, a machine learning based classification library like Spacey, uh, you know, which uses uh, pre-trained models to actually do named entity recognition. And then using a combination of all these different confidence levels, we compute an overall confidence level, uh, which we then, uh, you know, use to determine if this info type is applicable for this column. There's a very simple config file that Data Hub admins can use to tweak the regexes or the weights associated with the different parameters or even add additional info types. So this is meant to be a, a very simple extensible system. And we're really looking forward to contributions from the community also because of the extensibility of this. Next slide, please. So this is all exciting. When is it coming? Uh, this is a client only change. So in an upcoming actual data hub client release, which is probably happening in the next week or so, the Snowflake connector as a starting point will have support for classification. We will follow that up with support for other SQL sources like BigQuery, Redshift and, that, and others, and even the S3 data lake. Uh, we do need uh, to extract sample values from some of these sources for the classification to be somewhat accurate. So, and depending on the type of the source, we have to make some extensions. That's why this is not uh, just automatic. We need a little bit of work. Um, and you also will see support for other info types that are listed here, like US SSN and driving license number and so on. So bottom line is this is built to be uh, an extensible system. And, you know, and obviously it's the first release. So we're really looking forward to hearing feedback from the community about the accuracy of this. 
and also looking forward to receiving contributions for more info types and uh, you know have built a really comprehensive library within data hub so that right out of the box you get rich pii type detection that's it thank you very much all right um and we do have a quick demo all righty this classification section let me start this over this is the demo run of uh, automated glossary term detection first how do we enable this so here is snowflake recipe we have added this classification section we can enable disable it and uh, also specify the confidence level threshold uh, with which we want to enable classification optionally we can also add patterns which tables we need to classify that is detect grocery terms for next let's run this recipe So now the pipeline has finished successfully. If we scroll through the logs, we will see that some glossary terms were suggested. For example, for sex, the gender term was suggested with 0.9 confidence interval and so on. There will be some more. So now let's go to Data Hub UI and uh, see which tables may got the glossary terms let's say something human so there is this humans table great so email column has been attached the glossary term email address any more okay here email address as well as age columns were automatically assigned grocery terms okay gender age uh, for the pet also were automatically assigned terms okay thank you all righty um, so that wraps it up for our town hall. Thanks so much, folks, for um, hanging out for a few minutes extra. Um, so there's a question in chat. How is the system? How would the system deal with false positives? Can the terms be backed out and not picked up again on the next run? Um, so Rup, can you address that one? Yeah, so, you know, providing feedback on uh, false positives uh, and adjusting for the next run, those kinds of things for relevant feedback is on our roadmap. Uh, for now, since these are minted as glossary terms, you can dismiss them uh, if it's not applicable. Uh, and of course, it will come back if you run it again. Uh, but in the future, we will take that into account and not publish it again. Alrighty, so that's it for today, folks. Uh, we will stick around for a minute or two if there are any other trailing questions. But otherwise, thank you so much for your time and your attention. We always love putting together these sessions and just really love the engagement. Um, this has been a, an awesome round. And also, again, big shout out to Divya. Thanks so much for uh, sharing the, the amazing work the Stripe team is doing. Uh, and we'll see you all in October during spooky season. Maybe we'll have a costume party. Who knows? Huh? I'll dress up my dogs. <laughs> you should totally do that. Costume contest. A costume contest at Town Hall. Let's do it. Yes. Oh, man. Dress up as your favorite ingestion source. The sequel Let's... parsing boogeyman will be present. <laughs> oh, my gosh. All right, folks, I think we will call it. Thank you much. Enjoy the rest of your week, and we will see you on the internet, people. Adios. <laughs>